Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1992. We're going to be taking a look at Bruce Coburn and he's going to be playing through If I Had a Rocket Launcher. So let's get Bruce up on screen and see how he gets on. <laughs> jump in here because finding a point to jump in is going to be difficult. I suggest that you watch this the whole way through. The link's going to be in the description as always so you guys can do that without me interrupting it. Listen to the vocal that Bruce is throwing down but also the lyrical content because of the nature of the track. It's one of those things about Bruce that he will write a track and he will have something to say with that track. There's always a deep meaning and a deep message to it as well and this track is no exception but the amount of work that is going on with Bruce's finger style playing here first of all in the whole performance we've got this delay that is so intentionally put on the guitar but so well played through by Bruce because he's not just randomly throwing it in there as a delay that's just set at randomly maybe half a second it is all set up and we'll see it in the solo later so that the kickback is going to complement what he's playing and he's going to use that kickback as a response to certain lead lines and rhythm lines that he plays. So having that delay kicking back all the time means that the rhythm of the track just continues to move forward and a lot of this is to do with Bruce's playing. The way that he's emphasizing the beats with that right hand by striking the strings, it's subtle but he throws it in there. Also the finger style, the accents that he's putting in with the sequences that he throws together with the right 
right hand, just keep the whole track moving forward. And at this point, I want to bring in Colin Linden here, who's playing some fantastic slide guitar. What a player he is, by the way. But the expression that he puts into the slide playing that absolutely complements what Bruce is doing to a T, and it makes it so atmospheric. And let's just bring it in here that this is just two guitars. There's no bass and drums and all those other instruments that you might need or seemingly you think you need in order to build that atmosphere because these guys absolutely nail it with just two guitars and a lot of that is down to Colin and the way that he does play slide and he plays so dynamically when he does come in in those sections when he throws in the chords as well you can see he's got the slide on his little finger so he can supply those chords with the fingers that are left over first second and third so he throws in the rhythm underneath but all of the drive in the track is through Bruce's finger style playing. If you were just to have two guitars, it would be so difficult normally in order to keep that interesting. Whereas the intro is so atmospheric, is so full of dynamic subtlety that at no point throughout this whole performance are you bored or do you think, well, there's only two guitars here. I wish that a drum kit would come in and the bass, maybe some keys. You are absolutely fully satisfied with the sound throughout the whole performance. And we're going to be getting back into the performance so that we can get into the lead work that Bruce lays down and see what he does in order to keep the rhythm driving forward, but also keep the sound full all the time. Let's get back into it. jump in here because I've got to say something about that solo. Throughout this whole performance, there are things that just pop up literally every few seconds that I certainly as a player have just such appreciation for the technical ability but the way that Bruce plays everything because especially in that solo you would think that having another guitarist on stage with you I know this isn't a stage technically it's the same level as everybody else but having another guitarist there with you it means that normally in a solo, he would step up his rhythm playing in order to fill in that sound underneath because the lead is now just gonna be consisting of single notes. And Bruce, the whole time throughout this solo, keeps the rhythm driving forward. Listen to it again, rewind it, and look at Bruce's thumb, the way that he's going from the open string whilst playing the solo, and then he's fretting with his thumb when the key changes. So he's still supplying all the rhythm. That is 
not Colin doing that. He's playing, this is Bruce, lead and rhythm at the same time. The thumb keeps hammering away on those root notes the whole time throughout the solo. So all of that phrasing, all of those accents, all the hammer-ons, the pull-offs, all of the technique that Bruce is throwing in there is in conjunction with playing rhythm. And this is why it is so impressive to watch as a guitar player, but just musically listen to it and how it works. And then Bruce resolves it all the way back to where we started absolutely at the beginning of the bar. And this is the thing that we haven't got a drummer here. So both of these players are just locked into the rhythm that they're both playing. It's mostly gonna be Bruce and Colin is just bouncing off that groove that Bruce is laying down even throughout that solo. Listen to the amount of slide and chords behind the solo that Colin's playing because they're pretty much non-existent. And this brings up another point about playing versus not playing because I mentioned that Colin during that solo didn't play a hell of a lot of rhythm in the background. It's just Bruce providing that lead and rhythm at the same time. And Colin, if he did try and play lots of rhythm in the background there, it wouldn't sound as nice. It wouldn't let that lead breathe so that Bruce had the stage for himself. Colin knows this and then he just comes in at the end of the solo to then bridge that gap to the start of the next verse. Let's just finish off the track. On a race of your voice. At least I've got to try. Every time I think about it Water rises to my eyes Situation desperate Echoes of the victim's cry If I had a rocket launcher If I had a rocket launcher If I had a rocket launcher Son of a bitch would die have it. And another thing that I want to mention about Colin is the way that when he's playing the lead lines in conjunction with Bruce, he's applying that vibrato with a slide, but then when he's playing the chords as well underneath that Bruce is playing, he's applying that same vibrato with the whammy bar. So he's keeping that consistent sound throughout his playing, through the chords and through those lead notes. And he's also playing chords and descending sometimes with that slide as well. So he's getting a really consistent sound. It's the same voice coming out of his guitar throughout the whole performance. It's one thing to be able to play all of these notes in the right order, to be able to sing at the same time as doing those sequences with the right hand, changing chords with the left hand. It's a totally different thing to then start to apply dynamics to that playing, to everything that's going on. And you can listen to this whole track again, listen to the way that Bruce just increases the volume in his playing and in his picking on that right hand, and then brings it back as well. In that last verse was a great example he really brought down that level of playing that picking on his guitar so that the vocal was now more spoken because he was then opening the taps vocally because it had a little bit more emotion in there a little bit more anger and all of those lyrics and all of that vocal is going to be reflected in his playing on the guitar and I don't want this video to go on for too long but there are so many cool aspects to this performance that I haven't had much of a chance to get into Bruce and his background and and his career as a whole but just to finish with in 1968 his band called Olivus opened up for the Jimi Hendrix experience and cream that was in April 1968 it wasn't until 1969 that Bruce then decided to go solo and that was probably a good move because since then he's written over 300 songs he's got 33 albums 22 of which have gone either gold or platinum in Canada and it wasn't until 1979 when he released Dancing in the Dragon's Jaws and the first single from that album called Wondering Where the Lions Are that things really did start
start to take off in the USA because that single, the first single from the album, got to number 24 in the US charts. But Bruce is one of those rare top level singer songwriters who has that top level ability on the instrument as well, being able to throw together those complex sequences with the right hand, but also sing at the same time. I always say it doubles the difficulty, but once you're doing finger style sequences with the right hand and singing, it really does raise the bar of that difficulty to another level. He's also got that serious lyrical content within his songs. There's always a message in there. And sometimes you want to hear a generic song that makes you feel good, but then other times you might want to hear somebody who's making a point. They've got a serious message to their music especially if it's something that you agree with and a point that you want to make yourself. And Bruce isn't the kind of artist that's going to shy away with telling it how he thinks it is and just putting his point of view across through music. And it certainly makes it interesting to listen to, but also compelling to listen to because you want to hear the message through the track. The great thing is that Bruce has the top level ability to deliver it to you in such a musical way that you can connect with a song on such a deeper level. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!